Hello and welcome to this another video. Today we're going to talk about ray tracing on a laptop. Look at this Razer laptop that uh, was sent to me by NVIDIA um, to create this video. So this is video is actually sponsored by Scan uh, Computers and NVIDIA. And we're going to talk about uh, a number of new features that are um, being rolled out and uh, uh, delivered to you via uh, some of these uh, laptops here, which include the NVIDIA Studio drivers. So we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in just a sec. But um, I, uh, today I'm going to uh, talk about this scene that we'll have a look at into a little bit more detail, how to um, take advantage of ray tracing. So just before I do that, I wanted to explain a little bit uh, what NVIDIA is and um, to just for those of you who are completely foreign to the idea of ray tracing. So um, today we are really literally as of a few days ago uh, entering a new era where Unreal Engine has uh, gone, uh, the ray tracing features of Unreal Engine have gone out of beta mode and are now fully released with the uh, version 4.25. So this is really exciting because it literally means the beginning of a new era of producing content in real time using uh, ray tracing, which I'm personally uh, implementing and doing with my own clients, uh, rendering movies and so on, uh, and providing a lot of value um, to them and being being able to incorporate changes very quickly and uh, render uh, really long animations without any uh, delay effectively. So uh, we're going to go behind uh, my shoulder. We'll look at the screen. I'll talk to you a little bit about what NVIDIA Studio is and where you can find out more information. You'll have all the links below the uh, video if you want to uh, to check them out. And um, and let's 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 do that. So uh, I'll give you a last view of this really nice laptop uh, from from Razer here with the logo at the back. Okay, let's do that in just a sec. Okay, so here's the uh, NVIDIA Studio website here. And so what this is basically a kind of a badge that NVIDIA have organized with computer manufacturers and especially the uh, people working on the drivers to um, take into account this um, set of professional applications, basically, including uh, Unreal and uh, ArcVis, which we're kind of mainly talking about, and to be able to uh, stay up to date and satisfy our needs, um, especially with regards to working on the go, like on this laptop. So it's definitely something that I'll be looking into. And uh, again, if you want to uh, check this out further, check, look out for this studio badge on on the hardware so you can actually scroll all the way down here and it says um here we've got um high performance rtx laptops so this is what we're looking at today so let's have a look at this scene again and um get into it in more detail Hello and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about ray tracing. So I'm going to kind of show you how to use ray tracing in Unreal Engine and how to swap from an old project, uh, how to enable ray tracing in an old project. So normally you would kind of uh, start ray tracing by creating a uh, new project like that. And then you would kind of, if you're doing ArcVis, you could, you know, get uh, ArcVis and then you decide you choose the ArcVis uh, template like that and then you can enable ray tracing here but if you've got an old project you don't get this option here so we are in ray tracing here so I'll show you that in a minute uh, also I just wanted to point out here how we can have totally totally interactive lighting so what you're seeing here is I'm actually changing I'm only actually just uh, rotating the sun and you can see this beautiful kind of glow of the of the evening sun we're getting here with a new uh, sky system and as I'm rotating the sun interactively well I'm literally turning from day to night 
completely uh, without any other kind of setting or anything like that. And you can see that we have the um, bounced light, as it were, that's kind of completely changing in real time. I'm looking at the ceiling up here. Okay, another really great thing about ray tracing, and I'll come out of my camera here, uh, put the field of view a little bit closer, and uh, we can actually completely interactively change the scene. So I'm kind of moving on uh, closer to this uh, fairly pretty high-res bed, actually, that uh, I incorporated into the scene. Absolutely no unwrapping whatsoever, no prep or anything, just import it straight in. And we can actually completely interactively, so if I just uh, hide that, and you'll see that now it's gone. No black splotch, black uh, kind of um, uh, traces under the bed. And I can just so very uh, simply just swap the furniture around like this and move it around. So you'll see that uh, it's a huge gain of productivity being able to um, interactively kind of uh, change uh, things absolutely on the fly, uh, like I do with my clients, uh, the cameras or the lighting or anything, materials, uh, without um, any delay so you can do it kind of live like i do on uh, zoom calls whether we're in lockdown or not so hopefully uh, hopefully not for much longer um so we'll play around a little bit more i um i'm going to show you uh so we'll have a look at this kind of very realistic sphere here in uh, in a little bit a little while so i want to show you how you can uh, enable ray tracing on an old project because i know some of you may be looking at this and it definitely took me a little while to figure it out it's quite simple as it were uh when you know how to do it so I'm going to disable ray tracing and I'll uh, I'll open a uh, scene so we can start from scratch. Okay, so we are in a kind of standard mode here without ray tracing and how do I know that when I hit my little lit button up here, I can't see any uh, path tracing or ray tracing options or anything. So that means that I am uh, in kind of standard non -tra ray tracing mode, um, deferred render it's called here in this instance. So you can see that I'm still moving my sun and I'm getting uh, this kind of preview button here and um, but um, it's not changing the kind of real t the lighting the GI or anything like that in real time. So uh, what you would normally do is kind of build the lighting here and uh, to get nice uh, sort of bounce light effects and things like that. So what I'm going to do is uh, go to the edit mode in order to um, uh, enable ray tracing. We go to the edit menu item. We go to project settings up here. So there's two things that you need to look out for. Uh, the first one is you need to enable DirectX 12. So we'll go down to the platforms into the Windows tab here. And we want to make sure that this default RHI is set on DirectX 12. Yours may be on default here or DirectX 11. So really you want to be in DirectX 12. You'll need, need to do that once in your project. And then once that's done, you want to go up to the rendering tab here and uh, you go all the way to the bottom, all the way to the bottom. And then we say, oops, stay here, back down and we get to this ray tracing tab here. And then uh, we'll just take that. So we'll say restart now. Uh, save that. I'll pause while it's restarting. Okay, and I'll close this window now and I'll open that uh, little level that we had already. And now I am going to go and check straight away and here we have the path tracing here. So that's fantastic. So how uh, we'll just add a few setups here to kind of um, get our lighting to work in real time. So I've got the sun here on static. You can see that we've got this preview button, which kind of tells me that. So I'll change that on to go onto movable. 
and uh, to make sure that it's actually casting ray traced um, uh, shadows here so that we have so we can also see the effect of the ray tracing when I change my source angle you'll see that I'm kind of softening the shadows here to quite a great extent okay so if you um, now I'm moving my Sun down and you can see that the Sun is changing color and uh, that's really nice but we don't have quite the effect that we had before because our light our skylight is not yet uh, creating ray traced shadows so we'll want to go down into this little uh, advanced mode here if you select the skylight and you see this little arrow say show advanced and we'll go down and we'll say cast ray tracing shadows as well. So you see we get a quite a, a, a drastic, dramatic change. And um, here uh, the, our sun is going to, so I'll change the sun a little bit and I'll have to actually affect my skylight and turn it back on and back off like that. Uh, turn it on and off in order to, for it to register the new sun position. So I'll do a little trick uh, opening my tilde, my little command here, and I'll say skylight, skylight, oh, take the caps off, skylight, update. And so I will want to select this skylight update every frame. So this is going to be very, very heavy on the uh, GPU. So I'll put that on one. And now you'll see that when I change my sun, the skylight actually updates as well um, as the um, sun is updating as well. Okay, so we'll see that here when we go down the skylight kind of uh, gives us a, a bit of too much reflection to so what I'll do is that I'll actually increase the uh, intensity of the sun and that should give us a little bit of a different kind of intensity here uh, and um, kind of help us out. All right, so now I'm going to add uh, one of these meshes that we had. So I'll find this unmade bed that's fairly high poly. And it was imported using DataSmith. So I can just add that in straight away and we'll um, kind of add a few lights here straight away. So the key lights in the, uh, in the ray trace mode is this sort of uh, rectangular light here. So I'm just going to add that and then we'll see how we can start playing with light straight away and um, have these beautiful ray traced uh, soft shadows. And I'll put that on movable as well because we don't need uh, to have anything on static. Okay, so that's, um, that's kind of how you um, set up uh, ray tracing here on this laptop. So the um, advantage also that you have, which is now I'll revert back to this final scene here, um, is that basically we can do all this not only on uh, on in ray tracing but also uh, on the go, which is absolutely amazing. If you're anything like me, uh, having done this for many many years and being stuck to uh, very heavy workstations, here you'll see the uh, the work. The frame rate is absolutely to enable me to work. Um, uh, without any uh, restraint and the laptop is really faring very very well so I just wanted to finish by showing you these uh, this kind of amazing effect here that we have on this uh, sphere with the uh, textures on the, in the roughness so I'll just turn down my lens flares a little bit which are fairly strong and here again with ray tracing we get amazing detail into um, the uh, the any reflective surface effectively so here if we've got if I open this metal I can change a little bit the um, effect of this uh, texture to show you kind of here how we've got this very very impressive kind of metal texture 
showing here going from very, very rough here, this kind of very corroded metal, and then going to, again, very much more polished or um, using these um, textures in the roughness. So there you go. I hope this was um, useful. I hope you can now enable your uh, ray tracing in your old projects. And thank you very much to NVIDIA for uh, sponsoring this video. And if you want to know more about this laptop, which um, I hope you agree is very, very impressive. This is the Razer one. I'll have a link below the video and uh, make sure you uh, like and share this video. Thank you very much.